man, Jason Buchla is here. 14 years as a scout, former director of amateur scouting here with Sportsnet. Doing a ton of writing, too, brother. You're just on top. You gonna write your article while I talk? Is that why they put you on here? Is it like, buddy, JD talks so much. Buddy, I, I can I can only do so much. Yeah. Like my multitasking <laughs> is minimal, so I got to be dialed in. You got me, and this is all. This is it right multitasking here. Multitasking is BS. I'm a big believer in this. I think if you're multitasking, you're a liar. It's you're like, half tasking. Yeah, that's you're half-tasking. it. It's just it's it's a lie. People are like, oh, men are bad at multitasking. I'm like, no, this is a lie. There's just nobody <laughs> that's out there multitasking. I love it. I love like it. this is. This happens, I have this with my buddies. They'll be like, oh, well, I was watching the Raptors and the Leafs game, yeah. and I just watched both of this, because I record. So I'll record a game that I can't watch, right? If I can't watch something, I record it, and I watch it later. Yeah. I never watch two games, unless it's NFL kind of works that way, where I can jump around and bounce around, you can get a bit of a feel it's for the game. It's a static sport. For sure. But the other ones, whenever someone's like, and I was watching the multiple games, I was like, you were watching none of the no. games. You don't know anything. I bet you I come up to you the next day and start asking you about different stuff from the game, and you're going to be like, oh, yeah, that was, yeah, no. that was a There's good no part. There's no chance. You miss all the details. No, for sure. of course. For sure. No, you got to do one thing at a time. That's what it is. So we're doing this, and we're potentially trying to break news because, again, I just did an update, and I was kind of trying to just be cool to the sponsor where I was like, yeah, let's, you know, uh, let's just fire them. Uh, let's fire them a little bit of love, seeing as we're getting pretty quiet here, but now we're doing it for real. Uh, this NHL trade day. Deadline update is brought to you by your local Ontario Subaru dealers. Welcome to uncommon performance in a Subaru with legendary symmetrical full-time all-wheel drive. Okay, so the big fish that was left today, I think by most people's standards, right? The biggest name that's left on the board that was like a consensus to move, the non pareco types, the the guy that, yeah, we all thought, hey, he's, he's going somewhere. And we had uh, Mike Feud on today who talked to him yesterday. That's his guy, Tyler Toffoli, said mm. that he was expecting a move. So Tyler Toffoli is on... Uh, the way out. He's going to be heading to Winnipeg. Um, still waiting, I think, for... Oh, do we have all the details? Um, it sounds like it's picks. Okay. It doesn't sound like there's any uh, roster movement. Winnipeg with the the giving up of picks? We're all right with it. You didn't like... Is it this year's draft? Or was, I thought that they gave up the first, right, for in, in this year's draft already for the first trade that they made. I'm looking up their draft capital as we speak mm-hmm. so that we can... Uh, Kind of so it together. you know it's picks, but as of right now, all we know conclusively in terms of the the trade package is that it is to Foley and it is to Winnipeg. Um, so you know that's a team that's that's loading up. They're getting pretty aggressive there. That's that's two big names that they I, go grab. Yeah. And I like it. You know, I think that let's just be honest here. The Winnipeg Jets in Canada, hockey's better in Canada when the Winnipeg Jets and mm-hmm. you know the Edmonton Oilers obviously are there, but. When the Jets can be good, it's good for the game in our country. And, mm-hmm. you know, Winnipeg's fan base, when they get to the point that they're going to be as good as I think, they, I think they're going to be an exceptionally hard out in playoffs. I like the way the roster's constructed. Mm-hmm. They obviously have a Vezina quality uh, goaltender in Hellebuck. Uh, they can play heavy hard on the back end. They're going to bump people and say, hey, listen, that division, that conference, like look at some of these teams, right? Like mm-hmm. big, strong. So having said all that, um, this is this is good news for Winnipeg. I like that they're uh, that they're being aggressive. It is interesting in the draft pick thing. Just uh, from my point of view, JD, on that stuff is Winnipeg traditionally has held on to picks as much as possible because it's not the most optimum free agent destination. Mm-hmm. So they have to draft and develop their own. Um, but uh, if this is the investment route that they're going to take, go for it. How much of this do you think that they're getting aggressive is actually how good their team is versus the attendance stuff? Because that that would worry me a little like they're saying we really really need some playoff success because if we go a year where we get bounced in the first round it doesn't look like we did enough maybe we're losing more people right um i don't think that you you can only control what you can control right so if you're a general manager and hockey ops staff you can only control what the product on the ice presents to this ticket holder right you know mm-hmm. you got to give them a reason to come to the rink so you just wake up every day you do your best job to to give them a reason to show up and uh, the rest is up to them but you know, it's uh, it's tough sledding, man. We came out of COVID. We came out. There's a lot of moving parts in this country right now financially for 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 families, and it's expensive to go to games. I totally get that. So all we can do in hockey ops is our be the best version of ourselves. That's it, dude. That's so much of it, though. Right now, it's just like people are feeling it in oh, their yeah. wallets 100%. all over the country. It's just like the taxation, the grocery bills, the transportation, like. You know, I saw, like, I'm not trying to get political here, but I did see, like, a local pizza joint being like, we're now charging you for carbon tax. And I was like, you're a pizza place. Like, you know, maybe just uh, fire me up the pizza and throw it in the oven, please. 
You know, I'm just trying to get a pie. Yeah. I'm just oh. trying to get a pie here. Like I just trying to have a cheap meal. I really don't need this today. Right. Uh, so just give yeah. me my five dollar uh, hot and ready, that, and I'm that, out the door. That's what you I know? mean. Like yeah. why? Why are we? Why are doing this? Your yeah. pizza place, okay? <laughs> <laughs> like we're already feeling the pinch mm-hmm. enough with the groceries and everything else and the inflation of this country. So I, I feel for the Winnipeg fans. I just I do wonder if there's that that business side of things. And you always start to get nervous. I think as a fan of any team, like I'm speaking from the fan standpoint of when other people start to get too involved with the operation and the Monaghan trade has worked out brilliantly for them. And so it's hard to be critical of that. And to Foley's, you know, playoff proven guy, big time goal scorer, good track record of success. But for a team like that, when you're giving up draft picks, you're not a free agent destination. Like ain't nobody coming to Winnipeg. You know, nobody's like, mm, you know, this off season, a couple of places that I'm looking, one is Winnipeg. You're a draft and development team. Like that's what you got to have. So I, I, I'm a hundred percent on board with that. With mm-hmm. What you're saying there. The one, the one thing that does give me pause is that they were able to extend, you know, uh, some of their best players last off mm-hmm. season. And, you know, we were all sitting here thinking what was going to happen with Shafley, what was going to happen with Hellebuck and um, players talk to players and there's a certain quality of life that uh, players uh, like to have, but you know, all things being equal, let, let's just call it for what it is. You know, if you have a chance to be in Florida or Winnipeg in January, you know, it's, it's, you're probably leaning, you know, Florida and, and, and there's no state tax. Of course. So many moving parts in these decisions. This is what right? I can't stand about the Vegas thing right now as an, uh, again, a, a fan, purely fan perspective. I don't mind the LTIR stuff. Toronto does it too, but it's, you know, their corpses on the LTIR. There's nobody that's coming back and helping you. It's like, okay, so Vegas gets, Hey guys, we got all the golf. <laughs> we got some nightlife. We've got a great suburb place where you can go buy a mega mansion and you live outside the city. And we're going to be able to bring guys here and have a great hockey culture and win a bunch of games. And you guys will all sign on the cheap. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Cut somebody else a break here, yeah. okay? Yeah. You know what? I, I do want the investigator into the injuries. I, I do want the secondary doctor to go have a little peek at the under the hood with Mark Stone. I can speak openly about it, you know, the, because I'm not in the league right now. Yeah. Here's my here's my thing. Like, I understand that injuries are going to happen. I get it. Yeah. There's no question. The the fact that it's happened with the same team two years in a in a row and it's the same player two years in a row. The look is horrible, right? Yeah. But a couple of different things. Bear with me here. Um. They, when they make a phone call, somebody's on the other end picking up the yeah, phone to make a deal, okay? So from a hockey ops perspective, there's a deal to be had. They're doing their job. You know, they're doing their due diligence. It's fine. But here's where I really break down. Imagine you're a team that's been healthy the whole year. Nobody's totally healthy, but I'm just spitballing here. Mm-hmm. You're healthy most of the year, and then you get the playoffs, and you're sitting there with your $84 million, $83.5 million roster, okay? Mm-hmm. You've been the best version of yourself the entire year. You're healthy. Meanwhile, your opponent has been banking people on LT, and guess what happens in the playoffs? They airmail in a $100 million roster. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my solution to this whole thing is I understand LT happens, but shouldn't we have some sort of a a standard come playoff time, the hardest time of year, that ice the team? Like, if if you're going to be cap compliant in playoffs too. So we're going to go 83 and a half versus 83 and a half. And if that means that you got to sit out one, somebody up, uh, up top and maybe use them another game, you know, you can switch guys in and out, but the roster that you present is cap compliant, even in playoffs. Cause I think on balance that gives it a little bit more equality that way. Mm. Um, I'm not going to be in here's, those meetings in the boardroom, yeah. but it's just, it just feels wrong. Like Here's my thing with it. I don't mind cap circumvention in a hard cap league where there's so many teams that to me, shouldn't matter nearly as much. Like I, I, I always hated when the hard cap came in, that there wasn't some luxury taxes, that there weren't some ways of that too, yep. having teams that are willing to spend some money. Like if you're the Toronto Maple Leafs and you're generating as much revenue as you do for the league. And then you're like, wait, so the Arizona coyotes can do the same thing yeah. for us. Like we're, we're as concerned about the coyotes as we are the Maple Leafs. Like that's BS. I hate that. Right. So either put in some form of really punitive luxury tax, like, yep. That's fine. So that everybody else ends up getting spread the wealth throughout yeah. the league. It's anyways. a rep like, share model, right? So that's what I mean. Like, look yeah. at what the NBA does. And they figured it out too, where it went too far one way, where they allowed it, where golden state was stacking their roster every single year to the point where they're like, okay, we can't have this. It's like the MLB. They say, Oh, it doesn't have a salary cap. Oh yes, it oh, does. Ask the New York Yankees. Yeah. Oh, the Dodgers. Yeah. No. Oh yes, it does. There's a reason why they're structuring those contracts that way is because those luxury taxes are hurting them. So as long as the NHL is going to play this game with the, honestly, I find it to be just Mickey Mouse hard cap stuff. Fine. Circumvent it. 
I just think that at least there should be something like, all right, you're going to bank a guy. He's got, if he's coming back in the playoffs, he's not allowed to play in the first, like what, four games, let's say, okay. you know, like have yep. a limit in which you're not allowed to come back for a game one or a game two. It's, it's gotta be a certain point. The game one thing, that's where it just drives me nuts where it's like you, you come, you step on the ice game one and everyone's like, well, come on. Yeah. You well, know? So I'm open to this whole discussion. I think mm-hmm. this is healthy. This is in its entirety. I think this is a discussion that has to be had. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, like talking to Chuck Fletcher last night over dinner, he's, he's like, you know, this year it's Vegas. Next year it could be like, if he's still the GM in Philly next year, it could be him in the same situation when Philly gets good. So when those GMs get in those meetings, they're like, yeah, they really don't reluctant. Have, yeah, yeah, they're looking around like, well, it could be me next year, you know, like, uh, well, I don't know. I, I just, you know, as a fan, um, you know, and, and to a degree as an owner too, like, yeah. you know, the further you go in playoffs, the more real money you make for your franchise, you yeah. know, you're lining your pockets, uh, the further you go. And I don't know. I just, I don't love the look, man. I, well, I can I tell you I this though, from my standpoint, if the Leafs, if Tavares was like, yeah, Oh, I, I pulled know, something sore back. I'd be like, yeah. Hell yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I never want to get rid of this. Bro. Let's do it. <laughs> you you got to yeah. go lie on the beach oh in my Naples. God. I think the best place I, is Naples for I, two weeks. <laughs> I would be thrilled with it. So, again, I can't hate too hard because, again, if it was – I'm, I'm Al Davis. Like if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. I'm, I'm all the way. That is my mold, baby. Like you want to play cards with me. You better believe that if you look away, like I'm going to try something. We're so smart. Why don't we just sit here and contradict ourselves yeah. all the way? Yeah. To that's the end, what I mean. you know? yeah, Hey, this is what I do. Double sided takes. Okay. Another quick one. Uh, this NHL trade deadline update is brought to you by your local Ontario Subaru dealers. Welcome to uncommon performance in a Subaru with legendary symmetrical full-time all wheel drive. Patty Maroon is on his way to the Boston Bruins. Honestly, it's, it's for a, I think a conditional late round pick is what Michael Russo is saying. Not the biggest of moves, but Hey, kind of noteworthy that after the Leafs play the Bruins and that looks like your first round opponent, you had a big game full of big scrums that they go out and get Patty Maroon. You think he's got anything left in the tank though? Not really. Yeah. No. I mean, a to B he's, uh, you know, not skating. Yeah. He was never a great skater anyways, going no. back to his junior days in London. Um, but what a great career he's carved out. Unbelievable. And, you know, upgrade in the room. Yep. You know, it makes everybody feel like they're, you know, a couple inches taller, 10 pounds heavier. Mm. He's already gone down this road a couple of times with the Leafs and playoffs. All these conversations are being had behind. So he might be in the cranium of some Leaf players already, and they take all that into consideration when they're Maybe, doing these yeah. deals, you know. And um, But, you know, this is a this is a four-hole guy that's, what, seven to nine minutes a night, and he'll mm-hmm. do his thing. Maybe he'll crash and bang on the power play or something, but... Uh, uh, I'm curious. I don't know if you have it in front of you there because Boston's right up against it. If uh, Minnesota probably had to eat a little bit of money there too. Yeah. Sure. I, well, if they did, they did it for nothing because again, it's a conditional late round pick according to Michael Russo. Okay. Well, then they would not have ate it because usually you see a. Fifth yeah. Or something. Sixth something else has to go that way to make them take some of the money back. Yeah, yeah. I still when I when I see this and where he's at in his career, I'll tell you again. Uh, I can only speak as a Leaf fan. I don't really care that you added Patty Maroon at this point in his career and. As Mark Savard always used to say to me, if he's so great in the room, leave him there. And that's kind of yeah. how I feel about this Fair one. statement. Fair yeah. statement. And you know what? Maybe this also speaks to, like, home ice advantage in the first round is going to mm-hmm. be a thing. Yeah. You know? Like, uh, we'll see how this all plays out with these two teams. But, uh, you know, the more you can have them on the ice, I guess, is, my is you know, matchup-wise, mm-hmm. the better off you're going to be. All right. So let's dig into the, the Gensel trade because – this is whatever. You're a guy who actually knows, all right? So I was reluctant. I was real reluctant because I did a quick Google, right? I, I fly through, check the prospect rankings. Neither of the major publications that I looked at had any of these guys as top five prospects in Carolina's farm system. Maybe one of them is a fringy five, mm-hmm. like depending on who you ask. Um, none of them is a big fella. <laughs> like These guys are not... The imposing types. Dubas goes out and gets his boy, uh, another Sue Greyhound, a guy that he's familiar with, and Michael Bunting. And I would think, say, for, I'll put it this way. Optically, it's a tough look for a general manager that is well-known for doing too much of the exact same thing and going to the same well. Uh, he's also playing with Sidney Crosby's career, um, who is 36 years old and still playing like he's in his prime. And the window seems to be, yeah, shrinking. Anyway, um, the prospect's names are... Uh, bear with me. I'm trying. I'm really trying. Cruz <laughs> Lucius. Yeah. How's that? That's, That's the great. easiest one. Hang on, yep. Vasily Ponomarev. Yep. And Ville Koivinen. Koivinen. Damn it. That was a double. That's a, double, that's a, that's a yeah. that was a stutter step for that one. All right. How are you grading these prospects? Because yeah, they also got a conditional first round pick in 2024 that uh, is only a first round pick if the Carolina Hurricanes make it to the Stanley Cup final. How do right. you think they did? From your standpoint, you're a former director of amateur scouting. 
you're bringing these guys in. Your GM's made this move. You're saying A plus, B minus, C plus. Where, how are you grading this? Well, can we just start? Let's put Bunting at the end of the conversation for a second here. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll circle back on that. Yeah. Koivin is the best one out of the three. Okay. I'm splitting hairs on the other two. Koivin is a point of game guy playing in Liga. Mm. Uh, he's like six foot, buck 78. Mm-hmm. Uh, motion player, plays uh, you know plays to his strengths over there, the bigger ice surface. Um, on .ca, if anybody wants to look today, I actually cut some film on him yesterday. Did some, you know, a GIF is that's in there and it shows mm-hmm. how he works like a a cycle from from low to high and a give and go on the bigger ice. So, um, you know, again, is there going to be enough room for him in the National Hockey League to do what he does well? Because um, he's got to work in space and he's got to come off the perimeter to make perimeter to make plays. He's not between the dots, you know, playing you know a heavy skill game. So um, he's the best of the three, though, for sure for me. Like I think he's got to be. If he hits, though, J.D., he's got to be like a top six guy because you can't mm-hmm. roll him out in the three and expect him to check, okay? Um, the other two guys, uh, Ponomarov, uh, again, so this is more of a playmaker. He's in the American League with Wilkes-Barr. He's got like nine goals. He's more of a distributor than a uh, than a shooter. Um, again, you know, coming out of the Quebec League, I scouted him heavily in Shawinigan, um, just over a point a game in the Quebec League. And, and again, it's it's a solid playmaker from below the goal line, outside the dots, Um he can kill penalties. He can do so. His his brain is fine. It's just not a lot, not a lot of heavy lifting going on there. You know, so um, he's not going to play heavy for you. Lucius at uh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin's on the uptick. Like their their program's really rebounded nicely this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is interesting though. Okay, so he's going into his junior year next year. He's a right shot guy. Uh, they run a lot of set plays through in the offensive zone. That kind of he cycles up top and he can rip pucks on his weak flank, especially as a right shot guy. Um, He needs to be signed, and it's really – I'm always reluctant to have a a kid go back for his junior year because Mm -hmm. those college kids, they start to get in control of their own destination as the longer they stay in college. So I'm curious to see what decisions made there with Lucius. Mm -hmm. But if I had to grade them prospect-wise, if one of them moved the needle at the NHL level going forward, Mm -hmm. I'll be um, satisfied, I, I would say. Um, but don't expect all three of those guys to be NHL players. That's what I would say. To so you have so. one guy moves the needle is basically out of those three. Yeah, I think yeah. one of them will hit. And if I had to guess today, it's going to be Koivin. I think the other two guys are recall guys. Mm. Okay. Lucius is a maybe. But uh, again, like I love, they don't have a lot in pit though. Let's be honest, right? Like their their depth is not great. Um, yeah, but that's why you need to hit on this trade. You need to hit on this trade, especially on the Gensel thing. He's, I know what he's doing here. I've, we've seen this act before. So he's betting on skill. This is what Kyle likes to do, right? Like he likes mm-hmm. to bet on skill and, you know, um, but for me, if there's not enough will, mm-hmm. it, the skill doesn't matter. Like when I'm scouting a player, there's three things I look for. First of all, it's like, can you play at NHL pace? Can you think at NHL pace? And do you have relentless compete? Because it's a hard day every day, right? If you don't tick off those three boxes first, your mm-hmm. skill attributes are so difficult to rise to the top, you know, unless mm-hmm. you're super, super elite. There's some cheaters. Even on the Leafs, there's some cheaters. You're like, like Nylander is a cheater, right? But, mm-hmm. you know, he's so elite yep. that, you know, he gets away with things. So I digress. You know, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I see the strategy. Um, would I have added a, maybe a different element? I would have gone and got a defenseman. They had uh, the Nikishin kid playing in the KHL. I don't know if they swam in those waters or asked for him. I would have gone after him and even, um, and definitely would have, you know, I would have even sacrificed one of those draft picks in return if I could have gotten a Keishan, um from the KHL. He's like a point of game guy, defenseman there. This is Carolina. the issue I have. Is it to me if you're trading the best forward at the deadline? Yeah. To Carolina, who as Fuda Fuda's been in that organization, I was talking to him earlier. He's like, they don't do rentals. They're bringing him back. They're going to be well, resigning. He's them. resigning for sure. No. So question. if you're trading the top guy at the deadline, and you're telling me as a fan that you're not bringing back one blue chip asset, I am beyond pissed. Yeah. You're telling me that you'd rather have one blue chip and, or sorry, you'd rather have four lottery tickets than a blue chip. And I, my, the philosophy there for me is I just vehemently disagree. Yeah. So, I mean, Koivin could be a six. Okay. He's top six guy. Great. He's not going to be a one though. Like Gensel's no. a one. Um, yeah. Which brings me to bunting. Okay. So here's my problem with this. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm a member of the Pittsburgh Penguins roster and mm-hmm. I see that we've acquired, like players see from a distance the strategy of a general manager or an organization. And they mm-hmm. already know that Kyle has historically brought in a lot of Sue Greyhound players. And, you know, he's, he has a way of, of being very loyal to, you know, the Michael Buntings of the world. Everybody. Um, Michael Bunting was minus 15 in Carolina. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, he's the worst plus minus on that team. He didn't fit for Rod Brindamore. Like I don't know, I, I you know, talking feuds could probably tell you this better. But um, if you can't play for Rod Brindamore, you know, and, and you know, answer the bell with the details mm-hmm. of the game, I'm I'm wondering who you can play for because it's not going to get any easier with Mike Sullivan in Pitt. Mm-hmm. You know, even if you're riding shotgun with Sidney Crosby, um, the bunting thing is um, it's just the same all over again. And honestly, we won one round. With, with this type of player, you know, here in Toronto before. Um, and, you know, to the point it was almost a distraction, right, getting suspended in playoffs with the, the elbow to churn yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not in love with it. Like, I'm not, I don't want to sit here and sugar Cody. Like, no, I don't, I don't love thing, it, man. But I, it's I, important to hear it from you because, again, I think that there is a propensity of people, especially fans and other people around the fringes in the market to just immediately dunk on Dubas because he's the ex. But, no, you're a guy who's actually in the know. You're someone who evaluates these guys. You've actually scouted these players. And yeah, it's a difficult trade for you. And I think that, again, this is the way, you know, we got to run here. We only got about a minute, but I'm okay with people making mistakes, even even general managers, coaches, players, whatever. When you start to lose it as an employee, as a, as a friend, as a family member, as a fan, whatever, is when the same mistakes get repeated over and over and over again. That's when you start to go like, all right, man, it's, I'm tired of this. So, and, and I'll let you go, but. What are we left in Toronto? Much of the same type of prospects. You mm-hmm. understand what I mean? The look is the same. Like, yeah. That's what's been hard for Tree. We have a lot of the same type of people, the Robertsons, the Nemelas, like all these smaller players that are coming through. Mm. Now in Pitt, they're stuck with three players that are kind of fitting the same sort of mold. So there's not enough room for all these guys on your roster, even if they all hit, because you can't build a team like that. Well, that's that's my too. opinion. Well, not only that, though. If it was working so great, then show me all the track record of the hits. And if you had that, it's like the same thing I was saying about the Leafs yesterday when they lose the Bruins. It's like, if you had the track record in the playoffs, it'd be like, fine, go to sleep in some regular season games. You got neither? I'm going to be annoyed. Anyways, that's a great way to wrap it up. Thanks for coming in today, brother. Anytime, Stay tuned for the rest of the day. I know you're going to be here on television and everyone's going to be just crushing. I'm going to have a beer. All right. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the podcast. We'll see you Monday.